Over here you can see a nice uh, animated uh, image of a pumping heart and uh, there are a few things that I would like to make you aware first before I start talking about the cardiac cycle in slightly more detail. Um, first of all, you'll notice that over here, this is the right side of the heart is colored blue because it carries deoxygenated blood. The left side of the heart is colored red because it carries oxygenated blood. Um, you can also see the two atria over here. That's one atrium over here. That's the other one that they contract at the same time. And the two ventricles um, also contract um, at the same time. You can also see that when the atria contract, the ventricles do not contract and vice versa. And you can also see that there are the valves opening and closing. And uh, when the atria contract, of course, then the atrioventricular valve over here opens up. And when the ventricles contract, then the over here the uh, semi, uh, semi lunar valves um, uh, open. So, um, now it is possible to divide the cardiac cycle into different stages and I would like to do that right now and I would like to explain these uh, stages. So, um, stage one is the atria contract. This happens now. Okay, now again. And every time when you over see over here the, these arrows um, with the blood flowing down to the ventricles, you know that the atria contract. When the atria contract, the AV valves, these are the atrioventricular valves, these are these over here, they have to open. Um, because the pressure um, in the um, atria is higher than in the ventricles, um, otherwise the blood would not flow downwards, of course. Because the pressure is higher, these uh, um, atrioventricular valves have to open. The semilunar valves are then closed. So you can see when they are open now, these uh, valves are closed. The semilunar valve is closed. And <clears throat> when they open, of course, the HAV valves, then this is the time when the ventricles fill with blood because uh, the blood is actually the thing which pushes these valves open. So that is uh, happens uh, during stage one. Um, the blood is basically uh, pumped from the atria to the ventricles. Maybe that's a possibility. That's something that we can summarize over here. Blood goes from atria A to the ventricles. Um, some students um, like to memorize this by heart, but I personally um, would not recommend that. Uh, just remember the blood flows from the atria to the ventricles. And for this to happen, the atria have to contract, of course. Uh, therefore, the AV valves have to open. And the other valves over here, um, which uh, uh, d direct the blood out of the uh, arteries, they have to be closed at that time. And otherwise the ventricles are not able to fill with blood. So I personally would say if you understand the events, it's simply enough to memorize only what happens over here and the rest automatically follows. So what about uh, stage two? Um, now uh, there is blood now in the ventricles and now they have to contract and uh, this happens now. Okay, every time when you see the arrow over here uh, pointing outwards and also over here, um, this is the time when the ventricles contract. Of course, the semilunar valves, these over here have to open to let the blood out. At the same time, the AV valves have to close, otherwise blood would flow back into the atria and that's something we want to avoid. And when the ventricles contract and the blood flows into the arteries. And uh, when this happens, during this time, the atria can be filled with blood again. So in stage two, you can uh, basically remember the blood is pumped out of the heart. Out of the heart. And this can only happen when ventricles contract. And uh, this, uh, from this, uh, several other things follow, like uh, the opening of the semilunar valves, the closing of the AV valves, and so on. The last one is the ventricles relax after the blood has been pumped out. 
the semilunar valves therefore have to close because the blood pressure drops again over here and the pressure in the ventricles drops yeah that's what i just said and this is a, an important prerequisite that there can be new blood flowing from the atria again into the ventricles because the blood always flows from an, a, a place of higher pressure to a place of lower pressure so um and uh, that is basically an overview um, of the cardiac cycle but just for the sake of completion i should also add something over here so we'll do it right over here uh, like the ventricles well i already wrote that over here um, can prepare preparation for filling up with blood again ah very bad very bad explanation preparation for filling with blood uh, you think of a better one. I, I'm, I'm not even happy with my own explanations over here. But essentially, with it, when I say it, it prepares, it need, I want to say that the blood pressure has to uh, drop uh, sufficiently um, for more blood uh, to flow from the atria to the ventricle so that we can go back to stage one. Okay, but I, I have to admit, I'm not happy with this here. Okay, um, so you think of a better thing. Let's move on. Um, some nice diagrams. Um, you should be able to identify what these diagram, what these lines mean, and as always, um, it's not as complicated as it might appear. I have a problem right now. Okay, well, here's my pen. Okay, um, I could not see my pen. So let's uh, have a look over here. What happens to the pressure in the um, um, aorta? And I think I have to change the color of my pen because you cannot see white on white. So you quickly um, apologize myself for. Okay, let's, let's use black. Okay, here I am again. Okay, now, yes, it's much better. Aortic pressure, that is the pressure, the blood pressure in the aorta, which is the main artery. And as you can see, it remains high uh, most of the time. There are some changes, of, of course, in blood pressures, uh, but generally it, it should be high. The atrial pressure, that's the pressure in the atria, generally always stays quite low because the pressure um, has to be sufficient to pump the blood from the atria to the ventricles, but it does not really have to rise a great deal because we're not really pumping it um, through a capillary system. We're, not pump it's, we're just parting it, pumping it from one part of the heart to the next part of the heart, from the atria to the ventricles. So the pressure over here generally uh, can stay quite low. However, the pressure in the ventricles really changes a lot, and that's the blue line over here. So it's low over here, the ventricles contract, and the pressure really soars up very highly, and then it drops very much again, okay? And then the ventricles contract again and goes down. And you can see that every time when the ventricles contract, <clears throat> at the same time, also the, the aortic pressure over here uh, peaks up a little bit. Now that is uh, the really easy one to identify because the ventricles are those chambers which are really strong. They're able to generate a lot of blood pressure and you can see this over here as well that it really peaks. So that's the pressure up here. Now what about the red line down here? The red line indicates the volume of the blood. And it's kind of obvious that when the the ventricles contract and the pressure goes up when of course then the volume has to go down because the blood is removed that's why the line drops down very quickly over here and then it's uh, filled up with blood again and when it's full the ventricle contracts again and it loses all the blood because it's pumped out of the arteries so that's also kind of uh, makes sense it goes in accordance uh, with the blue line over here um, as the blood is pumped out of the heart over here, the purple line is called the electrocardiogram, and these are the electrical impulses uh, which are triggered by um, the pacemaker of the heart. And you can see over here that there's always some, always a, a some kind of an electrical impulse uh, over here at the beginning, and this uh, triggers the contraction of the ventricles, and uh, therefore we, we have a, a big uh, increase um, in ventricular pressure because the muscle contracts. And down here, the gray line, that's called the phonocardiogram. That's the sound of the heartbeat. And you see that over here, there is a heartbeat over here and a heartbeat over here. It's a dum-dum. It's always a double beat. And over here is also a double beat, dum-dum. And 
what you hear um, during a heartbeat is not the contraction of the heart chambers, but rather you're hearing the closing of the valves. So it's like a valve closing is like a, a door being slammed shut, and that's the sound which is generated. Now the mitral valve closes. This is a valve is the one which can be found on the left side of the heart. That's the left atrioventricular valve is also known as the mitral valve. And uh, this uh, valve over here, the aortic valve, that is the valve which uh, goes out the to the aorta and of course it has to open over here um, as the blood pressure rises the blood is pumped out of the heart uh, into the aorta therefore it has to open and you do not hear a sound opening it but over here on the other side uh, when the blood pressure in the ventricle starts to drop again a little bit over here um, the aortic valve slams shut and you see uh, and you hear the second heartbeat over here so it's always the, the, the closing um, that uh, you hear, uh, which generates uh, the sound. Down here, systole and diastole, what does this mean? Systolic blood pressure, or the systole is the blood pressure when the heart is contracting, namely the ventricles are contracting. You can see this over here because the blood pressure of the ventricles really goes, uh, goes up. And the diastole is, is when the ventricles are relaxing. And of course, the blood pressure during that time is low. So the diastole is uh, the blood pressure between the heartbeats, so to say. And the systole is the blood pressure um, when the heart or the ventricles of the heart are actually contracting. So that was basically, uh, that was basically uh, an, an hopefully a, a, an understandable um, explanation of uh, um, the cardiac cycle using diagrams over here. And it is your task to be able to identify uh, what these lines mean and uh, yeah, what they indicate. Okay, this was it.